So now we're taking our avocados from the dessert table okay. to the appetizer table, and we are going to make guacamole, which nice. is basically what avocados are best known for. <laughs> One of the most amazing parts of good guacamole is the onion. And the reason why onion is not already out is because here's a tip. You know how sometimes you get a little emotionally invested when you chop onions? Of course. You of get course. a little weepy. Yes. A great way to prevent that is put them in the refrigerator. Gotcha. So okay. if you could grab that from the fridge, you can do it overnight or if you have you know, people coming over very quickly, at least two to three hours beforehand. So we are just gonna peel it. This is another tip, is that even though it's cold, it helps with the fumes that come from onions that kind of activate our tear glands, which by the way, it's an oil. It's an oil that's kind of released into the air. The more you tear, the worse that burn gets. Yeah. It's because that oil and those fumes is water activated. When you eat something spicy and they tell you drink milk or no. eat a cracker, right. not water, because it spreads it all around, exact same concept. Gotcha. We are gonna chop it right at the top because for this guacamole, not only are we using onion, we're using our superstar of super fruit, the right. avocado, and a little bit of jalapeno, some delicious lime, okay. seen this one before, yes. and the peppers, the radishes, and the daikon are for our chips. Because really? with every good Tex-Mex avocado-based meal, uh -huh. you need chips and guacamole. Of but course. chips could mean anything as long as it's crunchy. And sticking with our live food concept, we wanna make sure that we incorporate something that's crunchy and delicious and flavorful, but still live. Do you like a lot of onion or a little bit of onion? I like a little bit of onion. A little bit. All right, that's good to know. So I'm only going to use probably about a fourth of this. All right, and I have a knife, so I want to pop these in there before I get emotionally invested. <laughs> so that's another tip, is that once you're done with the onion, don't have it sitting <laughs> to nice. the side. You want to cut and then immediately put back in the fridge. And then even though we're gonna to continue to cut on this cutting board, we wanna make sure that we rinse all of those onion oils off for that exact same reason. Same concept here. Right. Although the fumes do not come into your face, they can get all over your fingers. Yes. So you wanna make sure that Don't you- rub your eyes. That's right, <laughs> that's right. So some of this is gonna be for garnish. So we're gonna slice it accordingly. Do you know where the spiciest part of a jalapeno is? The seeds. That's right. That's right. So we, not wanting it too spicy, we're going to get these bad boys right out of here. Gotcha. Okay. Now, a lot like our onion, the oils that are within those seeds, it's the exact same thing. They're water activated. Okay. So again, you want to make sure that you wash your hands at least three times <laughs> with a very good soap. Otherwise, you're just spreading it all around. What I want you to do is slice this into little strips. Now how, this hand, we know how to hold a knife. To properly hold it though, make sure that you can balance with this finger. Okay. Use the tip and just slide it through the meat of the pepper this way. Okay. This hand to hold it, you never want to hold your fingers like this. Why? You could chop your fingers or at the very right. least ruin your manicure. That would be awful. <laughs> that would be terrible. So what you want to do is kind of get this claw format okay. and you're holding it via pressure. That way, if you go to slice, you don't lose your fingers. Yeah. The handle is not gonna hurt you, the blade will. So that's where you wanna have the most control. Awesome, and I'm gonna do the last one. And I think that that should be enough. That'll be plenty spicy. So pardon me while I slide this over. Awesome. Okay, now on to a little bit of lime juice. There we go. And I am gonna hand you the juicer oh, gotcha. if really you could do the honors. All right. Awesome. Thank you. Perfect. Because we're only making a small little batch for the crudite and our chips and guacamole. Right. I think we're just gonna leave with a little bit of lime um, and then we'll use the rest of this to garnish. Now I'm stopping it right there 
because I want to add a little bit of sea salt. I wanted things to start getting mixed together. See how they're not entirely smushy, but just a little bit of like nice texture and chunked, nice. but it's still blended. Okay. This is when you want to add a little bit of sea salt. A pinch of a pinch, like done. Awesome. That's all, right. all you need. Have you noticed that something is missing? Other than chips? <laughs> That's true. Normally, whenever you have guacamole, there's also chunks of tomato. Okay. The right. reason why I am not adding the tomato just yet is because tomatoes, part of the reason why we love them, are so juicy. And if we put them in now, it'll make our guacamole a little bit too runny. Gotcha. So you want to add that at the end, either as a garnish or just kind of give it a quick stir once we have it in our bowl so that the guacamole stays nice and rich and creamy and meaty, whereas the tomatoes stay fresh and juicy. Juicy. Awesome. One, two, okay. three. Boop. All right. Now it's time to put our amazing creamy guacamole in the bowl to be dressed. So we're gonna take this out. So I'm gonna get every little bit out. What I love about making guacamole is that it's really personal preference when it comes to texture. Yeah, I was gonna say it looks really creamy. That's nice and beautiful. We're gonna set this in our sink to be washed. And then now, instead of using the citrus press, I'm just gonna give a quick little squeeze. We'll place that and it's onto grape tomatoes and give those a slice. So I am gonna cut these just like that. Large tomatoes get incredibly juicy. Right, and difficult to cut. You got it. <laughs> and these, especially since we're making just a small little appetizer batch, mm -hmm. you wanna make sure that it's as presentable as possible while still being easy to eat. So we'll space those just like that. <laughs> That's cute. <laughs> Wait till we get the peppers in. All right, so there's a little bit of tomato. Again, you can make happy faces, you can do whatever you want. <laughs> right now, I'm just trying to make it look essentially like a creamy stoplight. So now we're on to the chips and crudite, which awesome. is a fancy way of saying chopped up veggies. Okay. I am gonna cut the tops and the bottoms off of my radishes and make this daikon a little bit more hand held. Okay. Because I'm gonna be using my mandolin slicer to make that perfect, thin, round chip consistency. Awesome. What right. I'm gonna need you to do afterwards is to chop these up okay. into nice, fun little strips about finger width. Okay. So that that way you get that crunch, you get that texture, you get that amazing flavor of All fresh right. peppers, but it's still able to hold that weight of the creamy, amazing guacamole. Right, it is creamy. I know. Obviously, when you're working with a vegetable chip like this, you wanna make sure that whether you're using daikon or uh, radishes, that they're, kind, they're as thick as possible because I don't know about you, but when you get down to the bag, of, of, like the end of the bag of normal chips, right. there's little crumbs. It's a bummer. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So, same concept here. Okay. I am gonna move on to my mandolin slicer. Okay. Have you ever used a mandolin slicer before? When you get the right one, it's really not that difficult to use. It takes the guesswork out of making. Oh, awesome. Awesome little chips. Would you like to try a radish chip? Yes, thank you. Mm, that's good. Too. Crunchy like a chip, but it's live. So we're gonna place that in our dish. So now that I'm on my last piece of radish, I am gonna move on to my daikon. And what I love about how you're cutting these peppers is because you are leaving a curly little end. Most people mm -hmm. cut them off. I love that you've left this on there Good. because it makes it like a scoop. A yes, perfect little awesome. scoop okay. for our chips. I think we have more amazing yummy crudite than we do our actual guacamole. I would agree with that. So we've got enough daikon, we've got enough of our radish, we've got some delicious yummy green and red peppers and this yellow we are going to save for our entree 
which is the amazing live nacho tacos. Nacho tacos. That's right. <laughs> Thank you.